Ambitious women entrepreneurs are beginning a movement to create a new way of business that focuses on collaboration and community. Together, we are shaping the way by using our intuition, our inner insight, and our creativity. Join us for inspiration, motivation, and transformation. This is your host, Lucy McMonagle, and this is the Wealthy Wednesday Show. A special thanks to Gordon Reary for creating the music. You can find him on Facebook under Gordon Reary. So now, let's get started. Welcome to the Wealthy Wednesday Show. This is your host, Lucy McMonagle, and I am so excited. We have an incredible guest that really helps individuals over 40 to take their dreams and create income streams. Ooh, doesn't that sound exciting? Does definitely sound exciting to me. So Kinsley Grant is an incredible individual. He has had lifestyle tragedies and he's overcome them incredibly so that he can bring to you things that will help you achieve more happiness, to spend your life doing what you love to do, and help create, fulfill your future. He is also the host of the Smooth Career Change podcast. So let's give Kinsley a warm welcome. Welcome to the show, Kinsley. Thank you, Lucy. It's a pleasure being here, and I look forward to this opportunity. I've been looking forward to this, so thank you. Absolutely. You are so incredible. You actually, at 47, you went back to college Yes. So that you could pursue your master's degree and to start living your dreams. Can you tell us a little bit about what pursued you to want to start pursuing your dreams at 47? You know, I, I, most people are, some people think that at that stage of life, you know, what's the use? Just coast through and just accept the, what's handed to them the way they, uh, they are going through and whatever has happened in their lives. I'm the one that believed that, no. I I'm still have the many years of skills and experience behind me. Why not use that to help other people? So I had this inkling within me to go back into school. And I've been wanting to do that, Lucy, for the last four years prior. But I just kept on putting it off and putting it off. And as you know, the years go by. They don't wait for us, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I decided one day, you know what? I've got to go back to school because a part of me wanted to go back to college, get my degree, and I was the first of my family to have actually gone to school, gone to college and get a, a master's degree. So it wasn't just for that. I just felt a compulsion having that behind me, I'd be able to better serve those that have been put in my path. Wow. Wow. That, that is so incredible. And you came here f- to the United States from Jamaica. Yes. And that oven in itself, it, it, there's so much poverty in the world mm-hmm. and being in Jamaica myself when I went there in 2002 mm. there was there was beautiful incredible things that I seen and there was very sad things I seen yeah. but what, I mean that type of choice that you made I mean, that really is powerful can you tell us a little bit on how were you able to really make that transition from another country to here and not only that, to really thrive coming to the United States. That was a challenge. And I think part of that is that whole transition has been a, one of those script or the narrative of my life. And having done that in the, my adolescent years, and I came here, Lucy, and my whole family, my, my only, only one brother I had was in New York at the time, mm-hmm. had gone to live there. And I moved to South Florida. But the rest of my family remained in Jamaica. I came here, I had no family members close by. I actually, a friend of my parents' family, they are the ones who actually allowed me to stay at their house for the first, maybe almost a full year or so. And, you know, it was really very challenging because I left behind, as you can imagine, friends and family and, ev- and everything I knew, I had to leave that behind. So. When I think of people who are migrating to a new country, it's really traumatic in some regards because you're wondering at certain points, you know, the familiar, the familiar things are no longer there. 
everything is now learning and trying to learn as you go, but you have to also dive in and take care of yourself. So it was really a complex issue for me, but thank God, you know, through some very difficult and dark times, I, I really managed to survive and made it through. And I, just, I was determined I was gonna be one of those success stories because I believe that I've been given an opportunity and I was not gonna waste that opportunity one bit. Wow, and, and Kinsley, that, what you just said, was really empowering. You were determined yes. to become a success story. Yes. And most individuals, they they sometimes they give up on themselves. Yeah. Yes. Um, and that's why I find Lucy that many times the person can be so close to their, you know, the the point of, the, of breaking through. And as you know, the story about the person who dug for gold and, and could not find the gold. And so he sold the company and the person who bought it realized three feet away from, had dug three more feet would have struck gold, but never did. And so I believe in this whole idea that if there's something on your heart, go after it because, and not give up. Because what happened is, it's been put on your heart for a reason. Therefore, if you push, it, push through and persevere and just have that single track mind that I'd rather die trying to make certain that that thing within me gets out than not try at all. And that's why at 47, I, had, I went back to school with that drive within me. So it's one of those journey I've had through migration, through living here, you know, not knowing anyone, getting to know the system, assimilation, and, you know, all that stuff. But, you know, it's, I'm here to, to look back and say, I'm glad I did. Yes, yes, and that that's so true. And it's sometimes it's only three feet away yes. from striking rich. Yes. And a lot of times when we are going through all of that struggle, mm. it's helping you build that strength yes. that you need to hold the energy for the millions or thousands of millions that you are meant to serve. I could not agree more than what, I mean, that's so well said, because I believe that if we look beyond just our own immediate circumstances and we look over the horizon and see that there are people who are in a worse situation than we are, and we have an, a, a message or have something within us, a dream, that was given to us to test someone's life. And when we don't get that out and do that, and we are depriving that person of what they need most and they're desperately looking for. And I believe that if I collectively with you, Lucy, and others can tap into that, then we can change the world one dream at a time. And that's my mission. Yes, exactly. And can you tell us a little bit, changing the world one dream at a time? Can yes. you tell us a little bit, how do you do that? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a tall order, I think. And that's why I believe I have to have something so big that I know in my lifetime, I will not be able to accomplish that. I, I believe every one of us have to look beyond just what can be accomplished. Because if we don't do that, and we get to our end and realize, okay, I've accomplished that, now what? So it has to be bigger than us. And my idea is every one of us have a dream, Lucy. And I'm thinking if I can have a, a host of people identify what the dream is, and then how to take that dream and transition into either a side hustle or a full-time gig where they're using that dream to impact people in, around the world, then we have just done what it is I've just outlined of changing the world one dream at a time. And where this came from, Lucy, you know, my mom had been a school teacher all her adult life. She died in 2011. And my mom had, you know, battled cancer for several years. But towards the end of her life, Lucy, my younger sister asked her this question, mom, if you could have done anything else other than teaching, would there be anything else and what would that be? And my mom never skipped a beat. She said, I wanted to be a nurse. That nurse, that dream of a nurse, it was never realized. And, and I heard a few years ago, uh, the late Miles Monroe said this, that the, the graveyard is the wealthiest place on earth. And if you could mine the graveyard, Inside there, he would find, as we know, songs that have never been sung, books have never been written, dreams have never, I mean, business have never been started. And I believe that I don't want to, myself or anyone I come across, to allow their dream, like my mom, take it to the graveyard and make the graveyard any richer than it already is. And so I've 
dug myself a graveyard robber and encouraged people to join me in this movement so we can rob the graveyard of any future riches. In that way, we'll change the world one dream at a time. Wow. Wow, that is really, really powerful. And you actually, you had some health issues. Yes. That created um, a quad, quad, quadruple bypass. Was that correct? It's, it's correct, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Would you, could you tell us how, you know, you, and this was like just six months after you gave up your really prestigious job that you yeah. had for 21 years. Yes. <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden you're faced with this health issues and you're also a licensed cycle, uh, psychotherapist. Yes, yes. So you gave up this job of 21 years and then you got hit with these health issues. Could you tell us how, how did that help you really start de- deciding what do you really want to dream about? Because you had such a huge career. You had your master's degree. You had all of this going for you. And then you decided to fulfill your dream. Could you tell us a little bit about that and how you've overcome it? Thanks for asking, because I think that's a very intricate part of my story. And when I share that, I let people understand that sometimes in life you set out on your journey and you have all this grandiose idea of what you're going to do, but then you don't know what the future holds. And you have all, you know, and I put everything almost all eggs in one basket. I'm going to go after this whole thing, let behind a 21-year career and decide now is the time to take the plunge because there is something in me, like many of our listeners, your listeners uh, saying, you know, there's got to be something more to life than just this. It, it can't just be every day getting up and just going through the drudgery of, and every day, is, you know, every day for them is like a Monday. They're like, oh, no, I can't believe it's Monday again, you know. I'm glad that you are one of those persons who love Monday, as we said earlier. And I'm so excited to speak to somebody like you who loves Monday and find it so fulfilling. But I, I, after I leave, left my job and, and began to, like, you know, have this, this great vision and excitement and everything like that, and six months later in December, of 2008, I began to have these chest pains. And I remember what happened. I, I was, I had gone to the gym on a Monday and I felt the pain. I said, oh, maybe I just need to burp. That's how I felt. You know, there's something on my chest. And I drank some hot stuff, never, never went away. And I just kind of been stubborn. I met at the gym on Tuesday and still having these chest pains. And I'm, you know, just, I would not ever, ever tell anybody to ignore those signs and just think it's something very simple as I, foolishly did that almost cost me my life oh. and on Wednesday the, the Wednesday I remember I went to the, the the gym and came home and it was getting more intense and I decided to drive myself to the hospital to the ER and have them check me out I got there and they checked me out in long story short they said to, to me that we've got to keep you because there's some signs that we are concerned about we've got to run some tests Long story short, the tests were run they found out that I had some blockage that could not be removed without surgery and on, on December um, 12, 2008, I went under the knife to have quadruple bypass surgery where my main artery was 90% blocked. And, and oh. so I, I you know, it could have been that close, but it was blocked. And so I'm laying in the hospital bed thinking, oh man, here it is. What now? Why now? Why me? And all these questions that go to our mind, you know, what did I do wrong? Did I make a mistake? Did I make the, you know, all these things began to flood my mind. And then I realized, you know, you know, these are some of the setbacks in our lives. And it's really a setup for a comeback. And so I decided, well, you know, I'm going to push through. I have a vision. And I'm going to make sure this thing, once I get over this, this hurdle, I'm going to go after that still. And it kept me going, Lucy. And it kept me going. And it's my drive. Because I realized that I had to get this out quickly. Because we don't know how much time we have. So there's an urgency of the matter. So me getting through that is now even heightened my sense of urgency to share through my writing, speaking, and coaching to help people realize what it is that they have and get it done quickly so they do not end up not getting it done. Wow. Wow, and that's really powerful. And when you when you had these health issues after you decided to go on your own, you're going to make a difference in the world, you're going to make a change, before that and after that, was it the same thing that you developed? Yeah, you know, it's actually what happened was I looked back at that time and I began to, you know, as everyone would, is you're trying to 
figure out how this thing worked because I didn't have a way of saying step one, step two, step three, here's how you do it. I was kind of, you know, I, I read books and, and thank God for the, the, my, the exposure to, to books and, and uh, conferences and workshops and key individuals that really happened to begin to have this mindset change. And they became the, became the heroes of my life because what happened, they made me believe I could do it. You know, the Zig Ziglar, the Napoleon Hills, you know, all those kind of individuals would say, you can do it. We have done it ourselves. And one of the key individuals was Dan Miller, who had gone in bankruptcy himself at an early age, lost everything he owned, and today has come back and has made multiple millions of dollars. And these are the individuals that remind me, and I kept on looking at them and say, hey, if they could do it, I could do it as well. So I looked back and wondered, how was it that I did this? Was there any steps, a sequential steps that I could follow? I had a long time trying to map that out, and I really had a hard time figuring out if I was explaining to you, if you had asked me the question, what steps did you take, Kingsley, or what steps can I take? I would just say, hey, you know what? Many of these are just hit and miss. You know, I trial and error, and I really did not know how to put that in, in words in a sequential way. But, but thank God now I do have what I used to help people sequentially walk through how to take their, what I call their dream into income stream or into an income generating product or service that they can serve humanity. Wow, that's really powerful. And in so many entrepreneurs and so many individuals, when they start out, they, they go to these seminars, they, they hire a coach. Um, maybe one coach will teach them how to speak and one coach will teach them how to do this and one coach will teach them how to do that. But there's very few of them that will take your hand, bring you through a sequential step by step. This is, this is the best way to navigate those different things to start getting income in now. Yes. And you, you call that the smooth paradigm? Or yes. is, can you tell us a little bit on what are some of the real, I mean, not to give all your secrets away, but <laughs> right, what are sure. some of the basic tips that you can tell us about what is the smooth paradigm and how would that translate for the women entrepreneurs that are grabbing their pens and papers right now to start writing <laughs> things down? <laughs> you know, I, I think if I, I can see that woman an entrepreneur right now and think about them and, and in my mind my heart goes out to them because I think of my mom again and her story and, and really if I start with my mom she had a story and we all have a story so I use this word smooth as an acronym and I kind of use that the s-m-o-o-t-h and and want that those sequentially so the s is the story so you've got to be able to script a story that is so compelling for, for me, I knew I had to make a transition from 21 years. I knew I had, there's more for me to do than what I was currently doing. I knew I had given everything I possibly could where I was. Now there is something else beckoning it and calling and begging me to come over and help in some other area. So my story have to include, as it is you who are listening, your story have to include the why. What is it that you feel so compelled that, you've got to get out of you. And that has to be included in that narrative of the stories. I call it script the story. And what the first begin, and that's where the foundational piece is. You've got to get it right. It's got to just be a, fun, a strong enough story to sustain every other part that's going to be built on top of that. Because, you know, as you know, if, if our why is not strong enough, we're going to give up. And, and so I begin by looking at your story. So if I was to talk to that woman entrepreneur, I would say, let's sit down and tell me your story. What is it I can find there to become the, the clue, that theme that will help you really navigate to where you want to go? It's almost that arrow being pulled back and being shot. I've got to pull the arrow back and know how to put out the tension built strong enough to release that. So I want to release them in a straight path. The M is then once I've had a foundational story, I've got to map the mission. I've got to be able to map out what, the, what is the mission I'm going to be on, identify what it is, and map it out. And so the word, the, even the map is a, also a, a strategy of saying, here is what the map may look like. Using all the dots they've given me in their story, I connect those dots and helping to put the map together to know step one, step two, step three, where I need to go. 
And once I've done that, I said, okay, now what could the, the obstacles that may get in the way? Perceived obstacles or real obstacles? Because as you know, we have both the real and the fantasy obstacles that we, we believe that's there and may not be real, you know. So I call it out the obstacles, get them out. Let's put them all out there. Let's look at them. Let's really go head on because sometimes there are monsters in the closet and you open the door and there's no monsters there. And, and, so, and, and they create an obstacle, right? And so we got to get, and it's, that's objections. All those things are, are tied into the obstacle pieces. And once we're uh, out the obstacles, and if I'm going too fast or if you need to pause and tell me to stop, please let me know. You know, I'm just like excited about this whole thing. So at any point, stop me if I'm going beyond what I need to. You're going fabulous. I love it. Awesome. That. And then the other O is, is the option. So we got to open up now all the possible options that are available. Mm -hmm. And we have to look at them from all different angles. And so when I work with someone, I have them, we explore, we explore and exhaust the options available, both the ones they can see. Also, if there was others hidden somewhere, we want to bring those in. And as a coach, as you know yourself, we are able to see things that they may not be see themselves, but I heard in their story that I can now use and bring in and ask could this be also an option that could be considered? And once you've opened the options, the next thing is a T, we gotta trim the time. Because most people will say, I have no time. You know, I don't, where am I gonna find the time? I'm busy. We gotta trim the time to find the time now to pursue whatever it is that we've now come up with as an option that we can consider. And then we, we work on time allocation and, and maybe it's just 15 hours a week or what, you know, the whole idea of 168 hours in a week and after all the things that have been stretched away we have about 62 hours left just we could just, just sitting around doing nothing with the 62 hours we could really redeem you know and i have a way of working that whole math out and then the last thing is the h after we've done all that this is where the action step comes in we got to hit the hole in one and i borrowed that from the golf term because i'm saying when a golfer gets out there he or she wants to hit the ball and wants really to get that ball in the, in the hole right away. It's yeah. a quick win. And mm -hmm. so I had to make sure that person gets a quick win to create a motivation. And then we cycle it back around and then do this whole thing over again. Now with much more clarity, we can zone in on that one thing, get a win, and then begin to build on that. And by doing that, it creates a smooth transition and a paradigm occurs. Wow. Wow. That is so true when you follow those steps you have your story you have your map you have obstacles you have options you have time trimming and then you have the hole in one that really that that completely changes the paradigm from where you were yes. were to where you're going yes that is a powerful powerful process thank you and I, I, I mean, just that right there is, is worth gold. <laughs> it's, it's worth gold. And I know that our, this show is so quick. Yes. <laughs> I, could, I could be asking you questions <laughs> for hours. But, Kinsley, I wanted to know, you have a very special gift for the audience yes. so that they're going to be able to, you know, sit down, have some coffee, and go through this little guide. Could you tell us about the seven-step guide to turn your passions into income streams that you have available for our guests? Lizzie, thank you so much for allowing me to share that with your audience because I believe so much in this whole idea of people tapping into their passion and really creating a profit from that. That I wrote an ebook really, and from the ebook, I took the seven steps and I give this the the basic steps that you can look at, and a PDF is available that I want to make available to all of you who are listening right now, as you're listening, and um, Lucy will tell you how to get that in a few moments. But it's really a seven-step guide that will allow you to over a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, whatever you would choose, to sit down and quickly find a way to map your way through the process of getting to that immediate win and how to then narrow down what's the one thing you want to do and you can start with. It may not be the final thing, but at least it gets you started in the journey. And that's what the PDF is all about. Wow. And you can get that at smoothcareerchange.com forward slash WWS for Wealthy Wednesday Show, just the initials. 
And then you'll be able to really get the seven steps to turn your passion into profit. So, Kinsley, this has been phenomenal. I mean, you have totally made my entire show today. And I wanted to, I wanted to ask, is there any last little nuggets, any last little tips you'd like to leave our audience with before we wrap it up? You know, Lucy, you're doing a fantastic job and a fantastic service for the community of women entrepreneurs or those who are aspiring to become such. And I just want to say on behalf of your, you and, and the show that this avenue of expression, you've created a platform, is a great way to allow people to come in and hear people like myself or others who will bring these messages. But I want to say to you as you're listening today, remember this, that you have something within inside of you that's been God-given. You need to get that out because the world awaits you. And if you don't get that out there, someone may die. Someone may, may just go hungry because of what it is you have. And only you can provide that. No one else can. So let's get going and change your world one dream at a time. Wow. Wow, that is so true. So ladies, I am so excited that you are listening to this. I hope you had a pen and paper. Fortunately, you're going to be able to push the pause button if you download this show, and you'll be able to write this out. But if you'd like to get a hold of Kinsley, you can check out his podcast at Smooth Career Change. You can also go to his website at kinsleygrant.com. And he can, you can find out more about him, how you are going to be able to work with him if you would choose to work with him, and how you can turn your dreams into income streams. So I'd like to thank Kinsley. I'd like to thank you. You are fabulous. Thank you. And I want to thank my audience. You have been following me for over two years. I'm so excited that we have expanded the Wealthy Wednesday show, which now has over a thousand listeners per week. And I would like to really encourage you to go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Wealthy Wednesday show. Let me know what did you think about the show? Who would you like me to have on the show? And do you have anything else that I can provide you? Any topics, any special things that you're looking for? So again, my name is Lucy McMonagle. This is the Wealthy Wednesday Show, and I am excited to bring this to you every single week. So until next week, abundant blessings. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Wealthy Wednesday Show. This is your host, Lucy McMonagle, and I would love to keep in touch with you by giving you a very special gift that will help you move your business and your life forward. You can access this special gift I am giving to you at my website at lucymcmonagle.com. That's L-U-C-I-M-C-M-O-N. A G L E dot com for keeping in touch with me and getting access to a gift that will help you move your business and life forward. Until next time, abundant blessings.